work backwards to be able to build formulas a little bit differently than we've built formulas in the past. We've learned how to build and balance formulas based on their charge, but now we're going to learn how to build a formula based on its percent composition. So this would be like if we were given an unknown compound um, and they were able to analyze and find out its percent composition, we're going to be able to build the formula based on those percent composition. Okay, so we've learned how to break a formula down into percent composition, and now we're going to learn how to like build it back up. Okay, um, so in these topics, we have two types of formulas that we look at called empirical formulas and molecular formulas. Okay, empirical formulas are the most reduced version of a chemical formula. Okay, the most reduced version of a chemical formula. So any ionic compound that we build is automatically an empirical formula because we reduce that down. Right? We, would, we would reduce those formulas down. What I mean when I say that is if I had calcium sulfate and I crisscross this, it would be Ca2SO4-2. That's not its empirical formula. Its empirical formula is CaSO4, right? The most reduced version of those two ions coming together would be its empirical formula, Okay. On the other side of that, we, we work with something called molecular formulas. And those are basically the exact formulas of a compound that is non-reduced, okay? So molecular formulas, we typically see these in covalent compounds, not ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are always reduced down. So they always become an empirical formula. But covalent compounds could be molecular, right? which means they're non-reduced. And so let me show you an example of this. Um, a molecular formula could be something like this, C2H4. Okay, this could be a molecular formula because it, could I reduce that further? Yeah, but I'm not. The sample or whatever compound I'm looking at has a formula of C2H4 and it behaves like C2H4, so I'm not going to reduce it down. Okay, what would the empirical formula of this, if this is the molecular formula, what would the empirical formula of that compound be? CH2 would be that one's empirical formula, like the bare bones ratio of how those things go together. Okay, so we need to kind of understand the difference between them. We're going to be able to look at and build both, but we want to make sure we understand what, what our goal is. Okay. So we're going to start with empirical formulas, okay? So these steps that I have listed here are steps to build an empirical formula. Steps to build an empirical formula, okay? So in most cases, we will start from a, for a compound's percent composition. It will say it's 36% carbon and 28% hydrogen and 15% oxygen or whatever it might be. It will start with a percent composition. If it does, sorry, go ahead. Can you remind me how you get to percent composition from the molar mass? You, you take it its something. parts divided by the whole. Yep, the part of the element divided by the whole molar mass. Yep. Okay, so if we start with percent composition, we're going to transition percent to grams. Okay, so if this says I'm 40% carbon and 70, no, not 70, 60% hydrogen, I'm going to just make these grams, 40 grams carbon, 60 grams hydrogen. And, I, and I'm just going to act as if my sample is 100 grams worth of my substance. So when I say move um, percent to grams, that means we're literally just changing the, the unit. If my unknown values had been given to me in grams, then I just start there, right? I don't have to go to percent composition and then back again, right? I'm just going to start with grams, all right? So I'm going to walk you through each of the steps, and then we'll apply it to a practice problem that'll bring it all together. But once we have anything, everything in grams, we're going to convert them to moles so that we can compare them, right? We can't compare molecules gram to gram. We have to compare them mole to mole. So we're going to convert all of them from grams to moles. We will divide each by the smallest number of moles, and that gives us the ratio in which they fit together, and then we build our formula, 
Okay, so this is kind of this step-by-step -step process that we do. We take everything to moles, we divide by the smallest number of moles, and that gives us a ratio in which to put our atoms together into a chemical formula. Okay, so we've got our steps here. Let's go ahead and, and try a practice problem, okay? All right, it says an unknown compound is found to have a percent composition that is as follows, 32.3% sodium, 22% sulfur, 45% oxygen. What is the empirical formula of the compound? So I'm just going to list out my, my, my knowns here. 32.38. I don't want it to be in percent. What do I want it to be in? Grams. So I'm just going to go ahead and label it as grams. And that's sodium, so that's Na. Okay. 22, I'm going to go ahead and draw my little T-chart here because I know I'm going to have to convert them to moles at some point. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a little T-chart right there. Okay. My next one is 22.65 grams of sulfur. So I'm going to convert that. And my final one is 44.99 uh, grams, I apologize, grams of oxygen. And I know I'm going to convert each of them. Okay, so if I'm converting from grams to moles, what am I going to need to use? Um, am I going to use Avogadro's number? No, I'm going to use molar mass. So we need our periodic table out because we need the molar mass of each of these elements. Right? Grams of sodium would go on the bottom to moles of sodium. And the molar mass of sodium is 23. Okay, 23. So I'm going to go ahead and do that math. Let's just do the math as we go. Okay, 32.38 divided by 23 gives me 1.408 moles of sodium. I'm going to highly encourage you to keep a few decimals in this step. If we round our moles too soon, the next step could make our ratios be a little funny if, they're not, if we're not keeping exact numbers. So I'm going to encourage you in this step to, to keep a few decimals there, okay? All right, my next one is sulfur. So I'm going to go grams of sulfur to moles of sulfur. Molar mass is 32. So 22.65 divided by 32 gives me 0 0.708 moles of sulfur. And then I'm going to convert oxygen to moles. Okay. It has a molar mass of 16, I would agree. So 44.99 divided by 16 gives me 2.812 moles of oxygen. Okay, so take a look maybe back at your steps of what needs to come next. We've put our, ma our percentages to grams. We've converted to moles. And so what's the step that comes after that? Divide. Divide by the smallest number of moles. So which of these mole values is the smallest? Sulfur. So I'm going to obviously, yeah, thank you very much. I'm going to obviously divide each of them by 0 0.708, but it obviously means I'm dividing something by itself, right? Because one of them has to be the smallest. So I'm going to take each of them divided by 0 0.708, 0 0.708, and 0 0.708, Okay. I know this is going to come out to tell me I need one sulfur atom, right? Because I'm dividing it by itself, which is a one. I take the other ones divided by 0 0.708. And I'm hoping here that we get nice, like, whole numbers, okay? Because we're trying to get to ratios here. So we're, our goal or our hope is that we come out with, like, nice, pretty whole numbers in this step, Okay, or really close enough. I got 1.9887. I'm rounding that to two, right? The ratio there is close enough. Okay, what about the last one? 2.812 divided by 0.708. Uh, that one gives me 3.97. So again, I'm going to say that's four oxygens. So now I just build my compound. I put it together. And typically, you just put it together in the order they gave them to you. So I would come over here and say... My formula is Na2SO4, okay, because I need two sodiums, one sulfur, four oxygens. 
in this step, divide the, the mole step right here, we don't expect whole numbers. We don't want to round that to a whole number. The step where we're looking for whole numbers is the ratio step. After we've divided it by the smallest, there we should or we hope to see whole number ratios there. I'll show you what happens if we don't happen to have a whole number ratio. But sometimes I get people get to 1.48 moles and they want to round it and say one mole of sodium. No, no, no. We don't want to do that. We want to keep that nice and exact so that we can find our ratio nice and clear. Okay? All right, let's try the next one. Find the empirical formula of a compound that contains 26.56% potassium, 35% chromium, and the remainder oxygen. I'm still finding empirical formula. I mean, it's going to be a compound that we're looking at, but we're still finding empirical formula the same way. Okay, so 26.56 grams of potassium. 35.41 grams of chromium. Chromium is CR. And then how do I know how much oxygen? I'm going to subtract them from 100 because I know my percentages have to add up to 100. So 100 minus 26.56 minus 35.41. So that tells me I have about 38.03 grams of oxygen. So I'm going to convert each of them to moles. So grams to moles of potassium. Potassium's molar mass is 39. Keep our decimals here right we want to keep a few decimals here chromium's molar mass mm, i'm not sure something bigger than that 52 thank you so 35.41 divided by 52 and then oxygen is 16 Uh-huh. Divide by the smallest. Do I need to pick a smallest between the first and the second? Uh, right? If those two numbers are essentially the same, even if this one was zero, right? Would I need to really bother doing that division? No, we know it's going to come out to one. So it tells me I need one potassium, one chromium, and then 0.681 gives me, uh, what do we see here? I have 3.5, yeah, 3.49 and 3.5 also. So do we see a problem here? Yeah, can we just round up? I want the ratio to stay intact. So here's what it would look like. Can I do K, C, R, O, 3.5? No, what I have to do is double the whole thing. To keep my ratio intact, I'm going to double the whole thing so that this becomes a whole number. Okay, so that means it becomes K2Cr2O what? Seven. Yep. So if my, you would rarely get something besides like a 0. 0.5. The only other one you might see is like a 0. 0.3, which would mean you have to put, take the whole thing times three, right? Um, but that's pretty rare. Mostly we'll just see it come out at a half. You'd have to multiply the whole thing by two. Okay? All right, I want you to try the next one on your own. Okay, it says analysis of a compound da, 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 contains only calcium and bromine. It says that four grams of calcium are present. So you don't have to do the percent switch here, right? It's starting you in grams, and then you're going to go from there. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to try this one on your own. What's the difference for of a molecular formula? It's not, it's not.
It's not reduced. Yep, it is not reduced, okay? And so the way we find out what its molecular formula is, is we take the, the molar mass of the unknown, this sample we're looking at, and we compare it to the molar mass of the, the empirical formula, okay? So typically for molecular, they will give you an empirical formula. This one says determine the molecular formula of a compound with an empirical formula of CH, and my unknown has a molar mass of 78.11 grams. So it gives some information about how we can look at this relationship, okay? So I need to figure out, first of all, are the molecular and empirical formula the same? Okay, do they happen to be the same? They can, they can be the same. But in this particular question, are they the same or is the molecular formula so many times larger than the empirical? So here's how we go about it. We need to find what's the molar mass of the empirical formula first. So molar mass of CH has to be what? 13 grams per mole. And so it says my unknown compound has a molar mass of 78. That, are, can they be, are they the same compound? They're not, if they were the same, their molar masses would match, right? But they, they don't match. So they are not the same compound. So now I go figure out, okay, well, my unknown has a molar mass of 78, and my empirical formula has a molar mass of 13. I'm going to take 78.11 divided by 13 and figure out how many times larger is my molecular formula than my empirical formula. So divide that out, and I think I get... Six. Um, oh, six with extra. Yes. Okay. We're going to round that to a whole number. So six. This one, we always should get a whole number. So if we don't get a whole number here, that means maybe we miscalculated molar mass along the way. So this one should be a whole number. So this tells me my unknown is six times larger than CH. And so all I do is distribute that 6 through there. So my molecular formula is C6H6. That's it. C6H6. Simple, simple. Okay. Now, in some questions, you have to do the whole thing. You have to build the empirical and then find the molecular, okay? What time? Okay, so that's what we're gonna do on this last one together, okay? This is the last one we're gonna do, but we're, it asks you to do the whole thing, okay? Number two says, if 4.04 grams of nitrogen combine with 11.6 grams of oxygen to produce a compound that has a molar mass of 108, what is the molecular formula? Okay, that means I have to find the empirical formula first, and then I can compare. Empirical formula has to go first, yeah. Is that when you put all the numbers into a T-chart? Yeah, we need to do the moles first, okay? So we're going to start with what we would have been doing, 4.04 grams of nitrogen and 11.46 grams of oxygen. Okay, we're going to convert. Are those similar to the mole values you came up with? Okay, 0.289 and 0.716. Are we similar there? So now our step will become to divide by the smallest number of moles. So here we're dividing by itself, which means we need one nitrogen divided by 0.289. gives me 2.5 oxygens. 
So instead of saying NO2.5, it really needs to become N2O5. Right? That is my empirical formula. So can that be reduced? Can I reduce N2O5 down? No, right? They're not reducible by the same number. So I know that's my empirical formula. Tell me what questions we have up to that point. We're, yeah, we still are not done yet. This is only our empirical formula. But I want to know if we have questions up to this point. Okay, now we need to find our molecular formula. So it says my unknown has a molar mass of 108. I need to find out what's the molar mass of N2O5. So I can check and see, are they the same or are they different? Okay, so molar mass of N2O5, two nitrogens plus five oxygens gives me 108 grams per mole. And so what's that tell me in this case is true? That th this is the sample I'm looking at. So this is the empirical formula and the molecular formula in this case. Okay, so N2O5 happened to be the same as the unknown sample I was looking at. Is that common? Uh, it just depends on the problem. Mm 